Okay, we're going to look at a real quick example of the um, statement of cash flow treatment for the premiums on the bonds payable, and then we will also look at the um, treatment of the discounts. So I'm thinking about when you first issue a bond. So my basic, basic bond here is a 10% stated rate, a 9.68% market rate, a 10-year bond has annual interest payments. And so I'm thinking about that first uh, entry we make when we issue the bond. We issue them, the face amount gets recorded as the bond payable. The proceeds would be the amount of cash that we actually received, and the difference goes to this premium account. On the day that we um, first receive the proceeds, that would be a financing, financing inflow. So that entire proceeds was a financing inflow on that initial date. Then at X at each, I'm sorry, each interest payment date, we would record interest expense and we would record cash, but they would be different. That would be a debit to interest expense. And in this first year, if you did the calculation, it would be 98,736. We would pay out cash of a hundred thousand. And the difference would be amortization on that bond premium. So what happens is we have cash going out, you can see here, of 100000 That cash actually is two different types of activities. So the premium amortization is a financing outflow and the interest expense piece is an operating outflow okay so my interest expense piece and my um, premium piece would be treated as um, different pieces. Now I'm going to tell you on your homework, when you do the indirect method homework, they actually put the premium amortization change in the operating activities. And then in their solution they say, we do this even though it's not theoretically correct. So there you go. For my purposes, I think you guys, it makes more sense if you put it in the right place. So it goes into the financing outflows. So then when it comes time for the bond maturity, maturity, you're going to have uh, the bonds payable is going to be removed for the face amount. And then the cash that you have to pay out at maturity is a million. And that's going to go as a, a financing outflow. financing outflow, right? So now you know that at the beginning you can look up here and see that we had 120,000 as a financing inflow and ideally when we get down to the bottom we should have the same amount come in as a financing outflow. But here we just had a million However, you guys are smart enough to know that if we recorded this premium as part of the financing outflow, if we put that in that account, that section each time, then over the uh, amortization over those 10 years would have equaled 20,000. So that if we combine this million and this 20,000, we have a million twenty thousand outflow and it all matches all right so that's the way it works for the premium so each interest payment date your interest expense is an is um, an operating piece and the premium from that cash payment goes through the financing section all right let's look at another situation
recording. All right, so now let's look real quick at the treatment of the discount um, on bonds payable in the statement of cash flows. So again, I've got a very simple bond, 10-year, 10% stated, 10.67% market rate. When the bonds are issued, we see we have the um, cash proceeds, 960000 and we recorded the bonds payable at its face amount of a million, and we had the discount of 40000 And when we first record, um, receive the proceeds, then that was going to be recorded in the statement of cash flows as a financing inflow, which you remember that from our... Um, looking at the balance sheet and figuring out which sections of the balance sheet go with which activity. So that bonds payable would be a financing activity. And so at each interest payment date, we would record interest expense. And if you did the calculations for this bond in the first year, you would see that was 102,432. We're going to pay out cash, remember, at the stated rate. So we're always paying out 100,000. And the difference between those two is going to be the amortization of the discount. So when it comes time to think about our statement of cash flows, we're only interested in the cash piece. And so we're going to have an operating outflow for the 100000 And you notice that the 100000 is less than our actual interest expense. So what happens when you're actually doing the statement of cash flows is if you're doing the indirect method, you've got to make an adjustment for this discount piece. And you'll notice this in your homework where you have to um, put this back in as a reconciling item because your interest expense that's in the income statement would be higher than the actual cash that was paid out during the period. So that's what would happen with each, each interest payment. And then what is going to happen at maturity when you have to repay the bond. Remember, the bond's going to come out at a million of its face amount, and the cash out the door actually has to be a million. But if you were to look up here at the top, you would see that our financing inflow was only 960000 So what happens actually when we repay the bond at maturity is we're going to put 960000 of that million dollar in the financing outflow, and the other 40000 is going to go into the operating outflow. And what that's going to do is over the life of the... Um, bond, if you added up all of the interest expense, it would equal this cash amount that at, of 100 each time plus this 40. So that is going to take care of balancing out between the beginning and the end, the proceeds that we receive, the inflows and the outflows. So there you go. That's a quick rundown on the premiums and the discounts.